Hey guys, welcome back. Before I start the video, I wanted to remind you guys that I'm holding a giveaway of one of the new Kaldheim Commander decks. To enter, watch my previous gameplay for the rules. I'll link it in both the corner and in the description of this video. Best of luck for those who enter, and now back to your regularly scheduled gameplay. Alright, block there, kill that, oh, that is trample. Guess I'm just dead on board. Today we have another game of CEDH, and this game highlights what I think is actually the strongest CEDH commander. And who is it? Well, it's Timna. While she is often second fiddle to either a Vile Smasher or a Thrasios, I think the card advantage she brings is actually what sets her apart. But, what decks are being run today? Well, starting off, we have Base Confidant, who has brought Timna Krom. This is a Thrasios consultation deck, that runs Underworld Breach as a backup combo. Next up is Fluffstash, piloting Timnatana. This deck is otherwise known as Blood Pod. This is what's known as a meta crushing deck. It's a stacks deck that is highly customizable to what you want to hate on. Its goal is to grind the game down and gain advantage, since you know the stacks pieces are coming. Tuned to a specific meta, it can often hold the entire table down, but only if tuned properly. Third up is MTG Loots. Who has brought his Timna Malcolm Artifact Stack Stack. His goal is to lock the board down and whittle his opponents, while gaining advantage from his commanders connecting. He relies on rule of law effects to really hinder his opponents. And bringing up the rear is Porphs, who is piloting Brago, King Eternal, the only non-Timna deck at the table. This is an Azorius control deck that uses lots of fast mana and stacks pieces to slow his opponents down. He relies on Brago to reset his fast mana and gain advantage. But without further ado, let's get on to the gameplay. Base starts it off with an untapped water grave and a jeweled lotus, cracking it to cast his commander, Timna, passing after that. Bluff plays a Badlands and passes with nothing else to do. Lutz cracks a Bloodstained Mire for an Underground Sea, which he uses to cast a Soul Ring. Keeping the artifact ramp going, he then casts a Talisman of Dominance, a Mox Opal, and a Chromox imprinting a deafening silence. He uses all of that to cast his commander Malcolm, Keen Eye Navigator. Finally, having nothing else to do, he passes. Well, I'm tilted already, not even gonna lie. Porf plays a snow covered island and then plays a Mystic Remora, and then a Chromox. He imprints a Teferi's Time Twist and passes, feeling pretty gypped he had to go last in the turn order. Stupid turn order. Ugh. Base plays a Forbidden Orchard and heads to combat and hits Fluff with Timna. He nets one life after paying the other to Timna's ability and draws, but doesn't do anything else and passes. Fluff plays a Forest and to the dismay of the table he casts a Collector Oop. It resolves and he's done after that. Lutz, now having a lot less mana to work with, shocks in a Watery Grave and debates what he should do. Um, yeah, okay. I guess we'll go with, uh... Maybe you should have cast Timna. <laughs> <laughs> he heads the combat, swinging Malcolm at Fluff, creating a treasure token, and passes after that. Forbes pays for his fish and then plays a Tundra. He also doesn't have much to do and pass. Base starts off his turn by heading to combat and swinging Timna at Lutz. He pays a life and draws an additional card, and on his second main, he plays a City of Brass and uses it to cast Gamble. He doesn't pay for Porphs' fish though. He tutors a card and then discards an Enlightened Tutor and passes after that. Bluff shocks in a Temple Garden and then casts his own Timna. He heads to combat and swings the oof at base, who takes it and on his second main, Bluff pays a life to draw from Timna. Lutz starts off his turn by bolting himself to crack his Verdant Catacombs for an untapped Godless Shrine, and not wanting to be left out of the party also casts his Timna. He heads to combat and swings Malcolm at base, creating another treasure and paying one life and drawing off Timna. Having nothing else, he passes. Orphs pays for his fish and then plays a Mox Opal, but doesn't have a follow-up and passes. Base heads to combat, swinging Timna at Porphs, who takes it, and on his second main phase, he draws from Timna, but lacks the mana to do what he wants, so he discards Necropotence and Wheel of Fortune to hand size and passes after that. Bluff plays a snow-covered forest and heads to combat, swinging the oof at base and Timna at Porf. On his second main, he pays two and draws two, and then casts a stranglehold, to which base responds by casting an intuition, giving Porf a 1-1 spirit. Porf also draws from the fish. 
Base chooses Fluff to pick what goes into the hand and reveals an Underworld Breach, Pact Negation, and a Lion's Eye Diamond. After some deliberations, Fluff chooses Pact to go to hand since Base is far from being able to cast it. Finally, the Stranglehold resolves and Fluff is done after that. Flutes plays an isolated chapel for land and then heads to combat, swinging Malcolm at Fluff and Timna at Base. Lutz draws two from Timna and gains another treasure from Malcolm. But Lutz wants to leave mana up, so he passes after that. On his upkeep, Porf can't pay for his fish and lets it die. He then plays as Sabo's web and draws off the ETB. He had hoped to find a land, but luck is not on his side, so he discards a lithoform engine due to hand size and passes after that. Based once again just heads to combat and swings Timna at Fluff. He draws one on his second main phase, and then plays a Scalding Tarn, and tries and casts a Silence, to which Lutz responds by casting a Tainted Pack. He stops early at a Mental Misstep, and tries and use it to counter the Silence, but Base fires back with his own Mental Misstep, and the Silence resolves. Base then cracks his Scalding Tarn, but forgets about the Stranglehold, taking one, but not being able to find anything. He realizes he just threw the game away and passes his turn. Untap. We live, boys! I blew my load! <laughs> <laughs> Fluff plays a bayou as land and then heads to combat. He swings Timna at base and the oof at loot. He draws two from Timna and then casts a Chalice of the Void for zero, to which base Dovin vetoes it, giving Porf the spirit token. Fluff, still worried about losing the game, decides to hold up mana and passes after discarding a stomping ground to hand size. Loots heads to combat, swinging Timna at base and Malcolm at Fluff. He gains a treasure and draws two cards. Lutz then plays a Marsh Flats as land and then casts a Rule of Law. He passes, and at his end step, Fluff flashes in an Aven Mind Sensor. Or finally draws a land, playing a Snow Covered Plains, and then casts a Teferi, Time Raveler, and uses his plus one and passes after that. Faced heads to combat, swinging Timna at Lutz to draw a card, and on his second main phase, plays an Island and passes. Fluff heads to combat, swinging the mind sensor at Porfs, the oof goes at Lutz, and Timna at base. On his second main phase, he draws three cards and plays a command tower for land. He then casts a Leyline of the Void. Having cast his one spell, he passes after discarding a Lanowar Elf. Like everyone else, Lutz heads straight to combat and swings Malcolm at Fluff and Timna at base. He draws two and then casts a Lavinia, otherwise known as a... But it's a big booty blocker. <laughs> and passes after that. Porf starts his turn off by using Teferi to bounce the oof so that he can use his artifacts for the turn. He plays a Windswept Heath and then casts Brago, passing after that. Base plays a Flooded Strand as land and then casts a Savine's Reclamation to bring back a Necropotence. He pays 11 life to Necro and then heads the discards. Fluff plays a Wooded Foothills as land and then casts a Collector Oof. Fluff then heads to combat swinging the Mind Sensor at base, but is only able to draw one off Timna. He discards the Vamp Theater and passes. Lutz, wanting to cast at instant speed, swings Malcolm and Lavinia at Teferi to take it out. And on his second main phase, he casts an unkicked Thieving Skydiver. And on his end step, Fluff exiles a Wild Growth to cast a Force of Vigor to destroy the Necropotence and the Mox Opal. Porf starts by playing another Snow Covered Plains and then heads to combat, swinging Brago at Fluff and flickers Brago and the Web to draw a card. On his second main phase, he casts a Strionic Resonator, and on his end step, base casts a Chain of Vapor to bounce the Rule of Law, to which Fluff responds with a Red Elemental Blast, countering the spell. The stack resolves, and still being Porf's end step, Lutz casts a Disenchantment on Fluff's Stranglehold. Base plays an Underground Sea for land, and then tries to bounce the Rule of Law with a Winds of Rebuke. Unfortunately for the table, this time it resolves and bounces the enchantment and mills everyone for two. He then casts a Mana Crypt and a Lotus Petal, following it up with a Snap to bounce the Collector Oof back to Fluff's hand. And in response, Lutz cracks his Marsh Flats, but fails to find, and the Snap resolves, untapping Base's land. He then casts a Thassa's Oracle, to which Lutz Vamp Tutors in response, hoping to find something in the top four. He chooses a card, but doesn't have a way of drawing it at instant speed, so instead he casts a Delay which base cast his Pact of Negation. The Thassa resolves, and in response to the trigger, he casts a Tainted Pact to win the game. Game Review Well, this was an interesting game. The game really ground to a halt when the Collector Oof hit the field. 
it stopped both Malcolm and Bragu, and really let Timna shine. Over the course of the game, I don't even know how many cards she drew, but she was definitely what kept everyone except for Porfs in the game. Another sleeper card that really shined was Stranglehold. It really shut down Porf by not letting him use his creature tutors, and prevented Base from winning on his silence turn. But, question for the viewer, who do you think is the best CEDH commander? Leave your thoughts in the comments down below. I hope you enjoyed the gameplay, and if you did, leave a like and consider subscribing, as it really helps us keep making videos. And remember, never give up, even if you're dead on board. I'll see you guys later.